looking back, spoiler alert, it's a long-term work. It was difficult at first, even trusting somebody with your your food when you've been addicted to like the cycle of just cutting, making sure you have a low body fat percentage. It's it's hard to get out of that. Hello and welcome to the Eat More Carbs podcast. My name is Jenna Fisher and I'm here with my co-host Riley Beatty. Before we get back into part two of our interview with Irene, we're going to do a high and low from this week and then we'll get back to the interview. So Riley, do you want to kick us off? Yes, I have a high that literally happened like two minutes before we just decided to record this podcast. With our one-on-one coaching services, one of the benefits of our packages is you do get private messenger support. So you can message us and through like our little private app that we have. So I was just checking messages and checking in on my clients before our call. And I have not heard from one of my athletes for the last like three to four weeks. And that's either maybe a good sign because they don't need us or it's a bad sign because maybe that they're grumpy. So I was a little stressed because I haven't heard from this athlete in a couple of weeks and she's doing period recovery. I saw that a message had come through from her and she goes, oh my gosh, sorry that I missed your messages. I apologize. I've just been super busy with my season and it's postseason, but I just want to let you know that I got my period for the last two months and I about fell out my chair because I was so excited. So very excited that she got her period back and that The reason I hadn't heard from her is just because she's been busy. So we love periods here at the Eat More Carbs podcast. And I just wanted to kind of share that one because it just happened. That's awesome. Congrats to her. My low for the week is I do not know where the time is going. Time is flying. For example, I was chatting with Robbie this past weekend. I was kind of watching him clean out the fridge and he was going through it, looking at things that we could maybe toss, things that we needed to keep, things that were expired. And he looked at me and was like, hey, you're going to eat this cheese. It's like some sliced cheese. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to eat it. Like I just bought it like a couple of days ago. And he looked at me and goes, it expired two weeks ago. That is just my life right now. I feel like we talk about this every day, but time is just flying. And this is just an example about how fast time is going and I don't realize it. And I don't know if I like it. What about you? What's your high and your low? My high is that I went to Run Club last night for the first time. One of the things that's extremely important and often underrated when it comes to overall health is building community and having community. So I'm trying to build community here in Arizona. And so I went to Run Club last night and it was a lot of fun and I can't wait to go again next week. My low kind of goes off of that is that similarly to you, I don't know where the time is going, but for me, it's really realizing that when at around five o'clock the sun sets and there's no sunshine left at all. And so I was at run club, we run outside because it's still obviously like beautiful here, but the sun still sets. So we were running and it was really dark. A couple people had like headlamps or lights that they were wearing, but I did not. And that was really difficult And I found that I really was afraid that I was going to trip or stumble or something like that because I was running on an unfamiliar path and I did not have anything to light my path. Before we get back into our interview with Irene, Riley and I wanted to take a couple minutes to talk just a little bit about disordered eating since most of this podcast and this interview has been about some of the struggles that Irene had in her relationship with food. We wanted to offer a couple tips when it comes to maybe approaching a friend or family member that you might be wondering or worried about when it comes to their relationship with food. A few other tips when it comes to approaching disordered eating. First and foremost, I just want to remind everyone that we should never be commenting on someone else's body. We have no idea what could be going on with them. There are people out there that are struggling with their relationship with food, and there are also people out there that are going through very difficult times, whether that be mental health related, that can be impacting the way that their body looks to us. So please remember to keep all of your comments when it comes to someone else's body to yourself. Oftentimes with disordered eating and eating disorders, the root cause of what's going on there is often not food. It happens to be something else. So if you have someone that you are worried about that might be struggling with an eating disorder, approaching them from a place of 
of compassion is a good place to start. Remembering to use I statements. I haven't heard from you in a while. I wanted to check in on you. And things like that are a great way to start a conversation with someone that you might be worried about is struggling with their relationship with food. These are just a couple good starting places when it comes to helping a friend or family member that might be struggling with their relationship with food. If you yourself are struggling with disordered eating or have a strained relationship with food, please remember that you can always reach out for help. A great resource to use is the National Eating Disorder website, which is NEDA. We will put the National Eating Disorder website in our bio so that way you have access to more resources beyond this podcast. Please always feel free to reach out to Riley and I. You can find us at the Eat More Carbs podcast, and you can also find us individually on Instagram. Thank you so much for listening to part two of our interview with Irene. We'll get back to the questions. Here we are now, and I'm sorry if the story is so long, but that's what led to what we're here and why I asked Ready to help me because for me, it was like, I will not repeat the cycle because it's not a life and it's not healthy. Just bringing awareness to it because like you said, like you were hiding those behaviors because a lot of the time, like we think we're the only, we're the only person going through that. And sometimes we really feel alone in the journey. So you being brave and being able to talk about your journey is going to help so many people. Thank you. (laughs) We're doing great right now, actually. So proud. Something that you kind of mentioned was like, you were not necessarily like ready at one point to reach out you were looking for a quick fix what would you say to maybe athletes who are in that situation too who are like maybe scared to go on this journey because it's a really big change and it can be something that's really scary looking back spoiler alert it's a long-term work it was difficult at first even trusting somebody with your your food when you've been addicted to like the cycle of just cutting making sure you have a low body fat percentage. It's it's hard to get out of that. I'm still working on it. I would say that at some point, if you're tired of being sad all the time when you're around food or you have more low body image days, I would call them like that, than highs. Well, I think it's the moment to think about it because I remember saying that to Riley. I was about 19 to 20% of body fat percentage. So that's not much. And some stuff were not working properly in, in my system, if you see what, if you know what I'm saying. And I was crying because I was not lean enough. And when I look at the pictures now, I'm like, I think it's the leanest I've been. When you look at me, I look perfectly healthy. I have capped shoulders, quads, whatever. I have everything. But inside, I was crying every day. So I would say that that was my hu- the, the biggest motivation is then when I realized like I cannot live like this. And one of my friends actually told me after surgery when I was crying, and I was like, I don't want to be like this. She was like, yeah, but at least you can be grateful that you can walk and you can train and you can do stuff. Imagine if tomorrow you could not do that, what would you do? And when she said that, I was like, okay, I need help because... I need a real fix. I cannot have just a quick fix. Like a a meal plan for three weeks and I'm back on track and then I'm just dropping the weight and then I'm fine for the next seven months. And then after that, we have something happens to you because life happens and then you gain another 10 pounds and then you have to do it again. So yeah, I would say like, think about the long run. There's no finish line. So don't think of it as a, there's a comp coming in a few weeks, but more as a long-term thing. I think something that's really powerful is that you talked about how it's not like a quick fix and it's going to sh- change all your problems, mm-hmm. especially when we've been practicing behaviors for 10 plus years, right? Mm-hmm. Meeting with somebody for an hour or like what you talked about, like going on a three week meal plan, like it's not going to mm-hmm. help solve years of maybe learned behaviors. Exactly. And if I can add to that, rewire your brain in, in a way is hard. It's hard because you have all these preconceived stuff. You know your body. I, I'm sorry, but as an athlete, we know our body. I know exactly how I can drop the weight like in the next two months. But now, like on, I'm talking to you like yesterday, I had a low body image because I had my period. But like, it's good because you're having your period, right? So you're you're healthy. It's great. But yeah, you're bloated. And I remember I was like, oh, no, I've gained like a pound or whatever. But now compared to before, I'm just like, no, first of all, it's normal. It fluctuates. It's a weight. It doesn't mean anything. Don't go back to this cycle because you remember how unhappy you were. So that's that's the narrative I have every day now. Every day I'm just like, each time I'm just like, oh, but if I do this, I could drop this. I know you can, but do you really want to do that? And then we start again. So yeah, I would just say that. That's so powerful. And I think too, you mentioned a certain body composition isn't going to make you happy. There's so many mm-hmm. other things that 
make you happy. Like one of the biggest wins I think you had, I'm going to brag about you for a little bit, is when you got to go on your girl's trip Mm -hmm. and you weren't stressed about eating. Like that was such a big win, I think. And that's something to celebrate. Yeah. I'm still so proud of that when I think about it. I was not worried about food, but I was just not also not tracking, if I can say. Like, I was still remember sit down, have my meals, make sure that I have all the nutrients and stuff, because I know that it could be scary for someone who's always been tracking me. Like, you did what? You did not track for a week? No. It was better because I could enjoy some food outside of the place and not weighing my chicken, making sure that it was exactly 123 grams. I was still, you know, in the morning, I do a 30 minute walk just to make sure that I get my body moving still having my training and stuff but still it's a huge win because before we all know like I would have did my meal prep and that's it that's all no restaurant no nothing so yeah (laughs) and Jenna and I talk about this a lot with just between ourselves and with athletes like you where it's not necessarily the behavior that's bad but it's the intention behind the behavior right so it's it's not bad that we care about getting all six of our essential nutrients on the plate or that we want to move our body or like somebody like yourself who loves to train it's that meaning and that intention behind the behavior right so like you doing four sports to hide that you're eating that is not maybe the best intention versus doing you know rugby or judo because you loved it exactly if athletes are maybe struggling with something similar or maybe they have reservations about reaching out what advice do you have for those athletes or maybe athletes who are listening to this and really resonating with your story and are maybe kind of scared to take that next step well i have two blocks of advice the first thing would be if you're too scared to ask for help it's okay don't pressure yourself but you can start to set some boundaries with people around you and this is what i'm doing it's so simple it's not simple it's just like you need to understand what triggers you and then once you understand that just make sure that the people that are closest to you i mean the people that you see the like really often if they have a behavior that triggers you just to tell them in a nice way or not in a nice way you choose Uh, It really depends, but like, I'm going to give some concrete example. When you attach a positive feeling to something that somebody says about you, you're going to have the same level of negative feelings if that same person or another one say something quote unquote bad about, about you or that you take as an attack. So don't take it personally. It's hard to do, but I'm getting better at this. The main example is exactly not even 20% of body fat percentage. Oh my God, Irene, your quads are popping. Your shoulders are capped. Yeah, I don't really necessarily enjoy having these quads and the shoulders because for me is not what exactly quote unquote I want to look like. So, okay, thank you. Can we stop like emphasize on that? Maybe I'm not okay with it. Come just regularly and I would tell to people like like, thank you for the comments I know it doesn't come from a bad place but look technically I'm not really in tune with this so can we just please not do it again and if people want to you know argument because people they always want to feel better about themselves they're like oh I was not saying that yeah I know that I'm not asking you to explain just don't do it again that's it that's all I'm not commenting on your body don't do it to mine that's why I'm saying you can say it in a nice way or be like me and just don't give a (laughs) Anyways, like just, set those just, boundaries, girl. You set, set those, those boundaries. boundaries. Exactly. You do you. <laughs> Same thing for your food. Talking more about people that have a huge appetite. If you get up and get another plate, you have this colleague at work or parent will be like, oh, you're having this again. Try this. Look at them and say, and so what? Do you want some? I promise you most of the time they, they feel bad. They feel bad about themselves. They're just like, oh, OK, so this one answers. Like she responds. And if you want to go further, I'm I'm ready. Like I'm, I'm ready. We're going to have a talk. There's no problem with that. But just don't get intimidated by people like you don't really know, tell you how to behave around food for your body, because I know that you're already struggling on your own. So we don't need that unnecessary like pressure from other people that don't even live in our body. Then when asking for help, I think that do your shopping. Like I didn't choose Riley right away. Like I knew I wanted to work with Riley, but I've been to other practitioners. I've kind of like interviewed each of them and I saw with who I have a better connection and where where I wanted to go. The, the type of, of coach I look when it comes to performance, like on the pitch are very different from Riley. And that's good because I don't need that same rigidity and comments and sarcasm regarding my food because I'm more vulnerable on that aspect. That's just my personal opinion. And then remember that they're registered dietitians. So it's still better than the advice you get from somebody online. We don't even know where he got the advice and we don't even know if he's qualified or not. And for your health, 
I think it's better. And if it can motivate you, it's actually possible to lose the weight if it's your goal, but eating stuff that you actually enjoy. I experienced that this summer and, and I was so happy and amazed. And even now when I'm telling you I'm taking it day by day, but I'm actually taking it by, day by day. I'm just like, okay, I'm, I'm not going to drop as quickly, but I'm still dropping until I get back to like the, the shape I perform the best in. That's my advice. Is. I love the... Uh your thoughts on setting those boundaries, especially as we enter this holiday season. I feel like Riley and I were just talking about this. It's no one else's business, but your own about what you're putting on your plate when it comes to fueling your body and having something that you can say back to people or just something that you know is a response kind of planned out already is a great thing to prepare ahead of time because it's okay that within a year's time that we maybe spend in between seeing family members or friends that our bodies change. It's usually something that someone feels they need need to comment on. If you're someone who's listening and you feel the need to comment on someone's body, just know that it's possible that someone can change within a year and that's okay. But having something planned out that you can, you feel comfortable saying that is a response to that. If you would like to stop that conversation from progressing, because unfortunately we do live in a world where people still feel the need to comment on what we're putting on our plate and how our bodies have changed, even though it's completely normal for a body to change. Exactly. Irene, we have a couple ending questions for you that we ask all of our athletes and all of our guests. So it is called the Eat More Carbs podcast. So we'd love to hear about what your favorite carbohydrate is. Bagels. I love bagels. I, I am love freaking bagels. out right now. <laughs> I'm freaking out. I'm freaking out because because now we eat bagels. We didn't used to eat yeah, bagels. No. I'm freaking out right now. Yeah. What type of bagel? I would say the cinnamon raisin. I think it was one of my favorite. Yeah, I like this one. What's your favorite pre-workout fuel option? The banana protein pancakes. It's... <laughs> Still freaking out. <laughs> what about your favorite post-workout fuel? I don't really have one, to be honest, because most of the time I live close to the gym, so I just have my dinner. But I would say that some beef with some fur like some tortillas and some bell peppers are fine like it's it's a wrap it's it's easy quick win would you add some cream cheese on it or anything it's fine my post workout is also a meal so i'm with you on that one easy works and then what about your favorite pair of kicks like favorite pair of shoes jenna needs some help with running shoes so any suggestions on shoes that you love they can be fun boots they could be running shoes they could be sandals for running shoes actually uh since over 10 years i've been i've always been with nike for shoes for footwear because i just love the quality and what they do anyways but the zoom vomiro they, they did like multiple edition i've been running with these pairs for years come each time i and when i buy the next generation of it and it's really comfortable so yeah i love it would you say that's your overall favorite pair of shoes that you own? Um, maybe not, but I'm a basic person. Come, if I say Jordans, everybody says Jordans. So at this point, you know what? I'm just gonna say Zoom Vomeros and be outside the box. <laughs> I'm special. <laughs> Just thank you for listening, I guess. <laughs> thank you for having yeah. me. No, for real, thank you for having me. I hope that I didn't talk too much. I'm sorry for the long narrative. But yeah, I hope that some people will resonate and... Um, if it could help anyone just a little bit while well, I'm happy. Irene, thank you so much for being on the podcast and being so vulnerable and sharing your story with everyone. Remember that there are a lot of things that might be triggering to us and we might respond in different ways, but finding a professional that fits well with us in order to help us work through those things so that way we can reach our goals, whether they're performance related or body composition related. If you want to find and follow Irene on social media, Irene, how can people find you? And where well, can they I have find a you? A little Instagram account that is at Life by Queen Irene. Uh, I do fun stuff, mostly gym shark holes, to be honest. I stopped a bit for a bit because I was busy, but like, yeah, if you have any questions or just want to like talk about it, I'm not a professional, but I can still give some tips that help me day by day. And other than that, I, ha I have a podcast, but it's in French, so we maybe you might not understand what we're saying but it's about empowering women in the business world so it's more about we're inviting people to talk about their journey that is quote-unquote unusual like they don't have to go to university they don't have to like you know this unrealistic or realistic like life plan that everybody have or that society portrays so we yeah we have that and um it's called potential au féminin is like feminine feminine potential in english so yeah so, 
we're I, I'll give you all the details and you can put it in the show notes. <laughs> yes, we will leave all of the comments on how to find Irene and her podcast in the comments description of this podcast. I guess I'm going to have to learn French so that way I can listen to that too because it sounds fantastic. If you have questions about this specific episode, please leave them in the comments or you can find us on Instagram or at the Eat More Carbs podcast. You can also find Riley and I. You can find me at jenna.fisher.nutrition. You can find Riley at riley.beatty.nutrition. As always, make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, and review. And as always, remember to eat more carbs.